friends! Welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. I'm Dennis Whitaker. Thank you for joining me in today's exploration of Big Wiggle, a bowing game that exercises control of bow division, bow speed, and contact weight in different zones of the bow. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Big Wiggle is a familiar term in the Suzuki community. It describes variation B of the twinkle variations. Big wiggle, big wiggle, big wiggle, big wiggle. It's the most rudimentary way to introduce bow division. And I always learn something by going back to play it, like a major league baseball player starting spring training by simply playing catch. Playing these exercises correctly takes control and an understanding of the demands and advantages of efficient bow division. The complete exercise is about seven minutes long. Control is five, mindfulness is three, expression is two, power and velocity are zero, coordination is two, and endurance is zero. I play Big Wiggle for the awareness, exercise, and mastery of accurate bow divisions and bow control in different regions of the bow. Also, to increase my vocabulary of expressive bowing gestures using a rudimentary bow division pattern. Big Wiggle is fairly straightforward. It uses a theme, in this case a C major scale, and eight variations to explore three useful applications of bow division. The first is in the scale and first three variations. I want to make the repeated notes at the frog sound exactly the same as the notes at the tip. It takes some muscle in the right thumb to play with a full tone at the tip. These muscles are called the abductor pollicis and the adductor pollicis, and can be strengthened just like any muscle. If you can't play loudly at the tip yet, then play softer at the frog until the sound is balanced. My students play this for me with my eyes closed, and I try to guess which part of the bow they're in. If they stump me and I get it wrong, then they get 72 points. I start with two notes at the frog and tip, then four, then six, then eight. If you want to keep going on your own, keep the notes in even groups for this pattern to work. Big, wiggle, big, wiggle. Big, wiggle, wiggle, big, wiggle, wiggle. Big, wiggle, 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 big, wiggle, 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 big, and so on. Variations D through G are played in the middle of the bow, and my focus here is precision. I want to divide the middle of my bow into three equal parts and hit the points exactly no matter what bow speed I use. In variation D, I want to make sure that my eighth notes are exactly half of the distance of the quarter notes. I do this by marking my bow with post-it page markers. I've put two pink markers here and one orange marker exactly in the middle. This shows me where to move the bow for the eighth notes. Right about here. Watch the pattern for variation D. The quarter note goes to the outer flag, and the eighth notes go to the inner flag. Now for the fun part. Variations E, F, and G are now even rhythms, but we're still going to use big wiggle to play them expressively. This means that I have to move the forte note twice as fast as the piano note. Notice how it sounds if I play all the notes piano in the same zone. It's nice and even, but it's boring. Now if I play one forte note, then the big wiggle pattern comes into play. Mm -hmm. 
I'm hitting the same flags precisely as variation D, but now, have the, no now the notes have expression and variety. Variation F starts at the lower flag and becomes wiggle big. You'll get used to it. Variation G is going to feel uncoordinated, but it sounds neat. I start at the middle flag in order to, for the division to work out. I like saying go big wig. Uh, it's needlessly complicated. Variation H is unique in this exercise with one long dotted eighth note and two even short notes. For this, I take off the flags. I play down bow to the upper half, stop, and play a ribbit, pause, play up bow, and play another ribbit. This rhythm played slowly is a lovely Sicilian. Played faster with shorter bows. It's commonly known as the Beethoven seventh rhythm. So those are the three main strategies of big wiggle. One, Exercise the same sound at the tip as at the frog. Two, exercise precise bow divisions for the quarter eighth note relationships. And three, exercise simple but clear bow divisions for the six eight dotted rhythms. I play these notes in a two octave C major scale, but you can play it with any scale, in any key, in any octave. You'll still get the benefits. So here's how we play it. Keep the volume consistent in all regions of the bow. Use a long bow on the quarter notes and dotted quarter notes, and a short bow on the eighth and sixteenth notes. In variations E through G, use a long bow for the forte eighth note and a short bow for the piano eighth note. Finally, for your own planning, the 4-4 variations are one minute each about, the 6-8 variations are about 30 seconds each. Play whichever ones you have time for. Okay, let's play. Two, ready.
That is Big Wiggle. It's fun, easy, and educational. For you advanced players, this technique is my first and most common solution for all orchestra excerpts in 6-8 time, like Mendelssohn 4 or Beethoven 9. For string players, it's a natural tendency to play down bows stronger than up bows, and that can be a big problem in 6-8 time excerpts, since it makes the eighth notes sound like they're in three groups of two instead of two groups of three. Incorporating big wiggle into a 6-8 excerpt fixes that problem immediately. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find big wiggle as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present these exercises in the way that I've used and benefited from them. I never intend to say that my ways are the only way to practice this or to approach this concept. You can adapt any of these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in this series in short stolen moments, or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. 
please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you and be well, friends.